Thank you, Paula, that was beautiful. Welcome to the Sunday morning service of the Unitarian Universalist Fellowship of San Miguel de Allende. We're so glad that you're part of our community this morning. My name is Kathy Canapa, and Paula Peace and I will be your service leaders for today. No matter where you come from, and regardless of religious tradition or none, race, culture, gender identity, or sexual orientation, you are all welcome here. In our UU Fellowship, you can bring your whole self, your full identity, your questioning mind, your open heart to share in fellowship, reflection, and wonderful music. We begin our service by lighting our chalice, a symbol of Unitarian Universalism. Thich Nhat Hanh said, we are here to awaken from the illusion of our separateness. May this light illuminate a path to experience a connectedness that sustains us on our journey. Our opening words are from Albert Einstein. The fairest thing we can experience is the mysterious. It is the fundamental emotion which stands at the cradle of true art and true science. He who knows it not and can no longer wonder, no longer feel amazement is as good as dead. A knowledge of something we cannot penetrate of the manifestations of the profoundest reason and the most radiant beauty, which are only accessible to our reason in their most elementary forms, it is this knowledge and this emotion that constitute the truly religious attitude. In this sense, and in this alone, I am a deeply religious man. And now, we are delighted to welcome our guest musician, Yaya Fuentes, on the hung and guitar. Good morning, Yaya. <laughs> Good morning. Hi, friends. Music for the soul, music for this world, sorry.
we seem to be having some technical difficulties. We're going to move on to a time for community. Good morning and welcome everyone to the Unitarian Universalist Fellowship of San Miguel de Allende. I'm Dan Newspiel, the president of your fellowship. Today's speakers are Kathy Canepa, Joan Wolfe, and Paula Peace. Dr. Kathy Canepa is a retired psychiatrist and psychotherapist who trained and worked with underserved populations in New York City, initially on Jacoby Hospital's monolingual Hispanic inpatient psychiatric unit, and later as director of the St. Vincent's Partial Hospital Program. She advocated for single payer health care in the US and in San Miguel serves on the board of Caminamos Juntos. Joan Wolf has practiced meditation and yoga since 1970 and in 2013 became a Buddhist in the Thich Nhat Hanh tradition. Through working at the Siva Foundation with Ram Das, she came to know his guru, Neem Karoli Baba, whose words guide her life, quote, love everything, serve everyone, and remember God, unquote. She facilitates a Friday morning weekly UUF SMA Zoom meditation group called Sangha of the Heart, to which you are all invited. Paula Peace, who often plays for UUF SMA services like today, was the pianist and founding artistic director of the Atlantic of the Atlanta Chamber Players for almost 40 seasons before retiring to San Miguel in 2014. With the Atlanta Chamber Players, she produced and performed in more than 250 cities in the US, Europe, and Mexico. Premiered over 150 works for chamber ensemble, recorded six CDs, and was featured in dozens of national radio broadcasts. In 2016, she was awarded the Governor's Award in the Arts from the state of Georgia. Kathy, Joan, and Paula are all members of our Sunday Service Committee. Now a few announcements. The Preparing for a Thoughtful Death series continues this Wednesday, July 22nd at 11 a.m. on a topic of legacy. I will be speaking on the broad topic of legacy as well as our fellowship's endowment fund. Ana Andrade, a local attorney, will speak about preparing your Mexican legal documents. And Oliverios Fernandez of Jardinas Nueva Vida, New Life Gardens Funeral Home, will speak about Mexican funeral arrangements. Zoom sign-in links will be available in tomorrow's newsletter. The following day on Thursday, July 23rd at 3 p.m., our very own Dr. Stephanie Studensky will be presenting at a care team sponsored workshop entitled In Service to Vulnerable Older People, Roles and Practices. Again, the Zoom link for this workshop will be in tomorrow's newsletter. Is this your first time joining us? If so, please contact Chris Chase at the email in your chat box to learn more about our fellowship. Are you interested in joining one of our Zoom discussion groups? You can read further details about them at the bottom of the order of service that you received by email. For more information about these groups, contact Diana Amaya at the email in the chat box. We welcome your feedback on this service. If you have any, please contact Kathy Canepa at the email in the chat box. Our Zoom breakout room discussions after the service have been very popular and are great places to reflect on this service and to meet old and new friends. If you want to participate, please just stay connected and you will be randomly assigned to a breakout room immediately at the end of the postlude music. Be sure to accept your room assignment on Zoom. If you're in a room with only one or two members, stay put a few more minutes and I will reassign you to another larger group. The rooms will stay open at least 20 minutes. I'll post a question at the end of the service that was provided by today's speakers 
to kick off your discussion. After the breakout session ends, those interested may return to the larger group to continue chatting. Choosing this fellowship as your spiritual home is an important commitment. After carefully deciding if UUF SMA is right for you, we welcome you to become an official member by completing a membership form available at our website and making a financial commitment to the fellowship that reflects your financial means and spirit of generosity. There's more information at our website listed in the chat box. Now, a brief message from our COVID-19 task force, whose members are physicians, nurses, social workers, and care team members with many years of pertinent experience. The number of active cases of COVID-19 in SMA and in many parts of the US continue to increase. So it's essential that we all keep up our safe habits. As many local hotels and restaurants have reopened, and since most of us are feeling the frustration of home isolation, it's tempting to risk social interaction with others and believe that by wearing a mask, you'll be protected. But as we learn more about transmission of this virus, we know that any indoor activities raise your risk of infection, even while wearing masks and keeping some distance. We know now that aerosolized virus particles can be contagious in an indoor space with poor air circulation beyond six feet of distance, and even after the infected person has left the room. This is particularly concerning because we also know that about 40% of infected people are completely without symptoms. So please, please continue to stay home whenever possible. Take special precautions when you must go out or when anyone must enter your home and take advantage of the many opportunities for social interaction on Zoom or other technology until this pandemic recedes. Now, please read along with Kathy and I, our spoken covenant, which should appear on your screen. We respect the interdependent web of life and work for a just and peaceful world. We encourage the search for truth and meaning, strive for compassion in our relationships, and seek values that will benefit our lives and the lives of others. This is our covenant. Respectamos todos los estilos de vida dentro de su red interdependiente y trabajamos por un mundo justo y pacífico. Alentamos la búsqueda de la verdad y la comprensión total. Nos esforzamos por mantener compasión en nuestras relaciones y buscamos valores que beneficien nuestras vidas y las vidas de los demás. Este es nuestro convenio. A few years ago, my son, who had not been very involved before, attended a Black Lives Matter demonstration and told me afterwards, dispirited, I don't think it accomplished anything. When I pressed him on the experience of being there, he admitted, well, it felt good in my heart, but he doubted it would have an effect. I said, then it's already had an important effect. Experiencing a connection you feel in your heart is vital to sustain us. In these difficult times with so much suffering in the world and so much to be done, we can forget or even feel guilty to look to our own spiritual needs. Today, we hope to spark your curiosity about all the ways that you are nourished in addition to family and community. Cornell West describes seeing huge courage in social justice struggles, but says we need more than just courage. We need spiritual and moral dimensions that are tied to that courage 
we need fortitude. For me, that fortitude to sustain myself and my engagement in society comes from feeling anchored in my interconnectedness with others and the universe. I experience that through the arts and science and acting out of compassion. And many have written about this using different language because language isn't quite up to the task. Immanuel Kant famously said, two things fill me with ever new and increasing awe, the starry heavens above and the moral law within. Now, I don't use religious language myself. I can't dissociate it from my childhood image of a white patriarch God upholding some hierarchy. But I relate to what you, you minister Galen Gingrich wrote in his book, God Revised. Quote, I believe the experience of being extensively connected to the universe and utterly dependent upon it is an absolutely necessary aspect of a fulfilling human life. He says that to him, the word God refers to the experience of being connected to all that is. Quote, I believe God exists in a way similar to the way beauty exists, but not in the way a person or an apple exists. Beauty itself never appears to us, but we find the idea necessary to explain an experience. While different in many other respects, beauty and God are both qualities of our experience. When I say I believe in God, I'm saying that I believe in an experience that intimately and extensively connects me to all that is. All that is present as well as all that is past and all that is possible. Now, I was raised by parents who were artists, a dancer and a painter, atheists, and in a house infused with leftist ideas of equality and egalitarianism. They spoke about union organizing and the garment center and conspiring to overthrow the dictator, Rafael Trujillo, in my father's homeland, the Dominican Republic. My parents never spoke of spirituality but they were profoundly moved by and connected to nature. And their social activism conveyed the sense of a human community responsible for each other. Kant spoke of the moral law within. Now, I always thought of my commitment to working for social justice, civil rights, union support, and anti-war movements as a moral issue not spiritual. But when I look back, I see the element of faith. I can identify my feeling of connectedness to social justice work as a feeling of sacred solidarity with the oppressed. I never expected to see it happen in my lifetime, but I had an unshakable faith that there was something better possible than what is moving towards that unlimited human potential has always given me hope and sustained me. It's been said, solidarity is the tenderness of the peoples. Solidarity is the tenderness of the peoples. To me, this is the intersection of oneness, compassion, love, and justice. By the way, those were words from Che Guevara. Now, as a child, I was always also being invited to experience beauty in nature, in a painting, in the imagery of Garcia Lorca's poetry, and in dance. My mother was a dancer who went on to create one of the larger ballet schools in Manhattan, and that was my after-school home. And I was fortunate to see some of the greatest dancers perform. 
you know, at the ballet, there are moments when you experience being part of an audience that gasps in unison, not at tricks, for example, I mean, the elevation of a jump or the number of pirouettes, but part of an audience that moans at the beauty of the lines made by a great dancer in a slow adagio movement. That shared experience of an audience participating in this sort of suspended, sustained beauty is hard to define. It's an ineffable experience that unites people plugging into some kind of oneness. It's transcendent, which to me means connecting the mystery inside to the mystery outside. We can so easily disconnect from our childlike sense of wonder and Einstein warns us to hold on to it. For me, the idea of some kind of oneness, of connectedness in the universe grew during my med school days as I was increasingly awed by the consistent laws of physics and by the human body. And I want to share one thing with you. As most of you know, our genetic material, the DNA molecules in our bodies, are two connected spirals, a double helix. Microscopic particles bound together by physical forces. Now, here are some pictures of a double helix with different imaging techniques. Here we are. Such beauty. Now, actually, the double helix that you're looking at is not a picture of our DNA, but rather a nebula in outer space, 25,000 light years from Earth. What an example of beauty in nature. And it gives me a profound experience of being one body with the universe. Thank you, Diego. What does that for you? What can help you to be receptive to experience that inspires awe and connection? Now, instead of a hymn, we have a gift from Alvin Ailey's company who are making videos available on their website in order to make sure that, quote, you can still find comfort and joy in the beauty of dance. Here is the choral opening of Ailey's classic, Revelations.
Good morning. I'm the Reverend Tom Rossiello, the Minister of the Fellowship, and it's wonderful to be with you again this morning by way of Zoom. We now enter into a very sacred time in our service, a time of sharing the significant joys, sorrows, and concerns that this community is now experiencing. If you do have a joy, sorrow, or concern that you'd like me to share in an upcoming service, please email it to me. And if you'd like to share something now, you can type it into the uh, chat column uh, at any time during this part of the service. Before I begin, I wanna remind you that if you are in need of pastoral care or help from our care team, please do not hesitate to contact me or them. These are difficult times and sometimes just talking with someone can help. We now turn to today's joys and concerns. As we share each one, we'll light a candle acknowledging that that person or that prayer or that thought is held this morning by the entire community. And I'll turn us now to our candles. Our first candle is a candle of concern from Barbara Erickson. She writes, I'm concerned for my good amiga, Rosie Regnell, who has stage three breast cancer and few funds to pay for her upcoming radical surgery. She goes on to say, I'm also concerned for this world in which we live where so many go without health care they need but cannot afford. Our second candle is one of joy and support for our member, Dory Beach, who successfully made it through two surgeries this week and is home doing well and recovering with meals provided by our care team.
The next two candles that I just lit are candles of remembrance and gratitude for two great leaders of nonviolent protest who together were involved with Dr. Martin Luther King Jr. every step of the way in the civil rights movements of the 60s and who carried on that work to the present day. They died on the same day this week. The first is the Reverend C.T. Vivian and the second Representative John Lewis, who was often called the conscience of the U.S. Congress. They will be missed as we enter the next chapter of the Civil Rights Movement. We take inspiration from both of them with these words from John Lewis. Never ever be afraid to make some noise and get in good trouble, necessary trouble. As cases of COVID-19 increase in San Miguel and the U.S. and around the world, in some places at alarmingly high rates, we light a candle of remembrance for those lost, of healing for those now who have the disease, and of hope for better treatments, vaccines, and cures. We light this candle of sadness and support. Trisha Singer's father, Fred Ethoven, died peacefully on Friday morning at the age of 99. He had a full and rich life to the end, thanks in no small part to the good care that Trisha and Steve provided. At any age, the loss of a parent is difficult, and as a community, we're here to support each other at times of loss. I know Trisha and Steve would appreciate your notes and calls of sympathy and support. Their email is now being posted in the chat for you. We light this final candle for all the joys, sorrows, and concerns that are held deep in our hearts but remain unspoken this morning. These are the candles of our community. They burn in remembrance of those who have passed and with the hope for a bright future. Each with a specific intention, but all together representing the light and warmth of this beloved community. In difficult times especially, may that light be our guide and may the spiritual warmth that they emit be felt among us all and beyond until all know that we together belong to the one circle of life and our caring and support for each other is the most profound blessing we share. Amen. And now we, for a time of meditation with Joan. Thank you, Tom. Dear friends, I'm going to lead you in a brief three minute guided meditation that will be followed by a short video featuring Buddhist monk Thich Nhat Hanh. If possible, please come to an upright, relaxed, and dignified seated position. I will cue phrases that will be followed by silence. During the silence, use the key words to help focus on your breath in and out. If your mind wanders, gently, without judgment, return to your breath. I will sound the bell to begin, and I will sound the bell a second time to close our meditation. The video will follow. Breathing in, I know that I am breathing in. Breathing out, I know that I am breathing out. In, out.
Breathing in, my mind is calm. Breathing out, my body is at ease. Calm, ease. Breathing in, I establish myself in the present moment. Breathing out, I know that it is a wonderful moment. Present moment, wonderful moment. Buddhist, uh, Buddhist meditation is uh, the practice of looking deeply into the nature of reality. Because if uh, we don't have enough uh, concentration, mindfulness, we cannot look deeply. We, we can be deceived by what we see and by what we hear. It's like science. Science is, uh, is also an attempt to look uh, more deeply. You look uh, at the sky and you see a star. You believe uh, very strongly the star, that the star is uh, there. It, but it, it, it may be that the star has already disappeared 1,000 uh, years of light uh, ago. And that is why you, you can be deceived by what you see and what you hear. And science helps us uh, to be more careful. Uh, and Buddhism does the same. Uh, if uh, you look deeply, uh, and then you can uh, be free from uh, wrong perceptions, from illusions. Like the illusion that uh, life is uh, permanent, uh, there is a permanent soul inhabiting each uh, living being, these kind of things. The Buddha did have uh, teachers. He, he followed uh, a number of teachers and he practiced with uh, communities and he had uh, made uh, some progress in his uh, path of uh, looking deeply. But he realized finally that this kind of uh, realization uh, uh, was not enough for, for his uh, liberation and that is why he had to continue by himself. And uh, uh, sitting at the foot of the body tree, he was able to make a breakthrough and discover the nature of uh, uh, interdependence, the nature of uh, interbeing. Uh, he discovered the way of uh, looking deeply and he could uh, transcend his idea of birth and death coming and going. Uh, be, being and non-being, and he was uh, completely um, liberated from suffering. Uh, the happiness, uh, the salvation of Buddha was uh, possible thanks to, to Mahaprasna, great understanding. And uh, when you got great understanding, you are, no longer f you are no longer afraid of being born, of dying. And that is why you want to uh, share uh, uh, your insight and your practice with other people. Hello again. 
we strive to be a loving community to each other and the surrounding community. We therefore give at least 50% of our receipts to organizations that serve Greater San Miguel. Centro Infantil de Los Angeles provides free, high quality care and education to children from the most financially challenged families of San Miguel. The center's program affords parents, mostly single mothers, the comfort of knowing that their children are fed, nurtured, and taught in a safe and caring environment while they work to support their families. Factors for admission include children of single working mothers threatened by domestic violence with a family income under 1,000 pesos per week. Factors for, uh, excuse me, unfortunately, Centro Infantil has had to close its daycare temporarily because of the impact of COVID-19 on donations. They continue to offer free preschool education to 120 children from three to six years of age. And 10 of those children are supported by a generous grant from our fellowship. Centro Infantil has tracked the performance of its graduates as they continue through primary and secondary school. All recent graduates are still in school and their average grades exceed those of all students in San Miguel and in the state of Guanajuato. This is a powerful testimony to the quality of their dedicated teachers, especially because of the challenges of their low socioeconomic status. Centro Infantil maintains strong ties with the entire family. During the pandemic, the center has been offering distance learning with the help of the parents and has been providing twice a month food deliveries with the support of Feed the Hungry the municipality and food purchased with their own funds. The center is in the process of launching a program that empowers parents, mostly women, to improve their self-confidence, develop leadership and business skills, and increase their incomes. Director Patricia Palacios Cortez wants us to know that our support is important, meaningful, and profoundly appreciated. Your donations help to support these Sunday services, as well as organizations like Centro Infantil. If you enjoy these services, please understand that they are not fully paid for by membership pledges. So during the upcoming music selection or immediately after the service, please go to our donate link, which you can find in the chat box or at our website, uufsma.org. That's uufsma.org. You may use PayPal or any credit or debit card to donate any amount. You may indicate on the note, in the notes section if you want your donation to go toward our minister's discretionary fund. Or you may leave it blank to help meet the expenses of Sunday services like this one, as well as supporting those in need in our community. If you prefer to donate by check, please send me a private chat and I will provide the address. And thank you for your generosity.
and I'll add my good morning. My name is Paula Peace, and it's my privilege today to speak about music and not simply play it for you. Though I must confess, I'm not sure I can express what it means to me. However, despite my complicated relationship with music, I know and I am grateful that it does sustain me and in a way which no other thing does. I strongly believe that whether it's Frédéric Chopin or Pete Seeger, whether it's J.S. Bach or the Beatles, music can soothe your heartache and connect us to in restorative ways to each other and to something greater than ourselves. And music doesn't just speak to performers because all listeners and players at every level of expertise can experience the sustaining power of music. I'd be interested to ask you what you felt during that Chopin nocturne I just played. There is no correct answer. Whatever you felt, whatever you got or didn't, or whether you just cannot put it into words, that's your legitimate response. In the words of Leonard Bernstein, music can name the unnameable and communicate the unknowable. When I hear music and when I play it, sometimes, certainly not every time, but sometimes I can be transported to a place which I would describe as sacred, holy, as connected to universal feelings, as perhaps connected to something which I name divine. Through that nocturne, I feel I can connect directly to Chopin's heart and his feelings of frustration, determination, heartbreak. Through great music, centuries of time, and thousands of miles of geographical distance disappear. So what kind of music has been my passion? My answer is chamber music. Rather than spending hours and hours alone working on solo piano repertoire, I became infatuated with making music with friends in small ensembles and with no conductor holding the artistic reins. I learned to communicate with secret body language and take spontaneous chances performing together during moments of fresh inspiration. I learned how to command and soar my piano part above three or four other musicians one moment, and then the next moment create a hushed, mystical background to spotlight my colleague's beautiful melody. Chamber music offers musicians the opportunity to function in a real democracy. My career has taught me that performing music is not about myself, but is about something greater. The acclaimed choral maestro Robert Shaw said that a musician must be one to whom something is more important than himself. So how far can music reach to connect us to beauty and sustain us? The Jewish scholar David Arno attempted to answer the question of what roles do music and the arts play in experiencing the divine? He replied, in the most poignant moments at times of joy, gratitude, awe, or sadness, words are not enough. Music is an invisible voice that calls forth deeply private emotions and elicits the conviction that the composer must have known these, these very feelings. That sense of being completely known that is the sense of standing before God. Thank you, David Arno. 
This makes me ponder, is it possible that the musical arts can help to sustain and unite all of humankind? Yes, said Bruce Ridge, as spokesperson for the musicians of 52 opera and symphony orchestras in the United States and Canada. Bruce writes, in recent years, my thoughts have turned to the role that music plays for all of humanity, especially as we have seen the world slump in moments of turmoil and violence. Music is how to respond to terrorism. Music is how to respond to violence. Music is how to respond to hunger and discrimination and injustice. In our troubled world, as we are assaulted with a 24-hour news cycle that too often sees human suffering as programming, humanity will always persevere in the face of violence. And music will forever be a response to hatred. And as my U.S. Congressman for much of my adult life, the Honorable John Lewis said, there would have been no civil rights movement without the music. Music gave wings to the movement. Those are lofty goals for music and for musicians. Throughout my decades as a full-time performer, my life in music has been one of special opportunities and rewards. But a life in music also brings plenty of special tortures. A colleague of mine used to laugh and call it torture chamber music. At times, the self-criticism can be almost crippling. Striving for ever higher accomplishments can and usually does make you feel that perfection and beauty are always just out of reach. So why have I kept trying to perform music? How can the pressures and struggles possibly be worth it? The answer has always come to me at the piano. The answer always comes from the music itself, from its awe and wonder, and dare I say it, magic. As one of those Unitarian Universalists interested in spirituality, I sincerely believe that music connects us to whatever you want to call it. I call it the divine, higher self, universal love, and this is what I call God. This is why I volunteer to play for services at our UU Fellowship. Now that my hectic career of performing chamber music has come to an end, it has been my privilege in retirement to reunite with the lone piano and explore and share its solo repertoire with you. I searched through the classical and world folk and American spiritual repertoire to find music that hopefully enhances the Sunday service topic. I searched for music that hopefully helps inspire our important mission of social justice and nurturing a beloved community. I thank you for the privilege of continuing to be personally sustained through performing music. And I hope that you too sometimes feel connected and blessed by the inspiring grace and power of music. I'd like to end my reflection today by sharing a video of a favorite selection of chamber music. This is a heartbreaking and powerful piece of musical poetry and drama. And I believe this devoted performance by pianist Noreen Polera and cellist Narek Haknajarian offers a more appropriate answer than my insufficient words 
to today's questions. What sustains me? What role can music play in experiencing the divine? This is the slow movement from Rachmaninoff's Sonata for Piano and Cello, and I hope that it speaks to your heart as it does to mine.
whether it's music or science or meditation or dance or we hope that this service has reminded you to stay connected with what you have found and named that sustains you in your life. A few words again from theologian David Arno. Music embodies the world redeemed. Discord resolves to harmony, fragmentation to unity. Our songs unveil the vision of the hidden world we seek. From the power of our joined voices, we draw strength to build it. Let us now join our voices together in singing, My Life Flows On in Endless Song, and unite to sustain each other and the world. May it be so. My life goes on in endless song of others. Thank you. We hope that we will have you as part of our community again next week for service. But for now, go in peace.